Hey everybody, I'm going to talk today about a condition called pulmonary fibrosis. Pulmonary, of course, meaning have to do with the lungs, and fibrosis means scar tissue. Pulmonary fibrosis is a serious condition that can affect the lungs and make the lungs more stiff than normal. Usually when you breathe, it is effortless. You don't even think about it. The air just comes in and goes out without expending any energy for the actual breathing itself. With pulmonary fibrosis, the lung tissue that normally is very delicate and flexible becomes very stiff with a strong elastic recoil such that it requires quite a bit of pressure to pull air into the chest, and this requires exertion. Eventually, the overall capacity of the lungs to hold air is reduced such that you cannot breathe as deep as you used to be able to breathe. This really affects you initially with exertion such as walking or climbing steps, but it can progress to the point where even sitting in the bed can cause shortness of breath as you struggle to pull in amounts of air that a normal person would breathe without even realizing they were doing it. What causes pulmonary fibrosis? There are a variety of causes, including no cause at all. The most common group of people that we deal with have a condition called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, where the word idiopathic means it just happens on its own without any good explanation. Other causes include some autoimmune diseases such as lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, radiation exposure, asbestos exposure, and a variety of other possible causes, including some genetic diseases that can cause the fibrosis. If the fibrosis is caused by a treatable condition such as rheumatoid arthritis, then treating the underlying condition may help prevent worsening of the fibrosis. But unfortunately, it is impossible to turn fibrotic lung back into normal lung. You can't turn a scar back into normal tissue. But you can do things to reduce the rate of progression of the fibrosis. How do we diagnose pulmonary fibrosis? First off, they have to have symptoms before we start looking for a diagnosis. Typical symptoms would be shortness of breath, worse with exertion, normally without wheezing or congestion associated with this, though there could be a dry cough. A chronic cough that just never goes away and the main causes are ruled out, interstitial lung disease, which is another name for pulmonary fibrosis, has to be ruled out. We initially start with a plain chest x-rays. I'm showing an example here of what a normal chest x-ray looks like. On a normal chest x-ray, air shows up as the dark areas. The middle section is where the heart is, and you can see ribs. The next image shows a patient that already has some pulmonary fibrosis, and you can notice that the lungs appear smaller, and you see some haziness at the edges of the lung, and again at the edges of the heart. This is the area where the lung tissue has become more dense. This leads to a reduction in lung capacity and increased shortness of breath with activity. Here you see some CAT scan images, which are cross-sectional images of the lung. First, the normal CAT scan of the lung, where you can see the detail of the lung tissue. And then an image of a patient that has idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, where you can see the fibrotic changes at the edges of the lung. Years ago, lung biopsies were required to diagnose pulmonary fibrosis, but CAT scan technology and radiology learning have improved to the point that most causes of pulmonary fibrosis can be identified through the use of high-resolution CT scanning, which eliminates the need for a potentially dangerous lung biopsy. Lung biopsies now are reserved for types of fibrosis that do not fit the pattern of the known recognized images seen in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. A biopsy, if it is necessary, can be done with a bronchoscope, but better, more diagnostic specimens are obtained through thoroscopic surgery, which generally requires a little less than a week in the hospital. What can be done about fibrosis? There are two FDA-approved medications that can be used to slow the rate of progression of pulmonary fibrosis. OFEV, O-F-E-V, is one. The other one is called Esbriot. Both of these cut in half the rate of progression, and there has been shown to be mortality benefit in patients taking these medications, meaning that the life expectancy is longer in treated patients than it is in untreated patients. Both of the medications have stomach side effects, but these are generally manageable. Unfortunately, it is expected that most patients with pulmonary fibrosis will have progressive disease, eventually leading to respiratory failure and death. In patients that are under about 70 years of age, lung transplantation is sometimes an option. 
because at this point there is no cure for pulmonary fibrosis. Because lung transplantation is complicated, expensive, and carries substantial risks to the patient, transplantation is generally only considered in patients that the doctors feel have less than six months left of life expectancy. There is always research being done to try and discover new ways of preventing or even predicting pulmonary fibrosis as well as methods of treatment. Oxygen therapy is often prescribed to avoid hypoxemia that can lead to cardiovascular issues with this disease. If you have further questions about this or other pulmonary conditions, please leave comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, share the video to people that might be interested, and hit the like button to improve the distribution. Until next time, see you later.